Hi. Hi. Good evening, guys. Uh, good, uh, good evening. Yes, it's evening. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, welcome on Spiral Dark TV. We are honored um, to welcome again for this new last book, but not the last uh, already because he already have written another one, but not uh, for us just today. So today it, we're going to talk about um, Encontros with Vidar and uh, Dr. Are Torresen is again with us today and we are really really happy about that um you are a doctor in veterinary medicine you studies anthroposophic medicine homeopathy acupuncture osteopathy and agriculture and you practice in saint de fjord norway and uh, you are practicing on animals and as well on people yes so you wanted to talk a little. Yes, what a travel through your books. Yes. Wow. It is. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the last, you know, I, um, you have not, uh, the third book you haven't read yet. Mm. And the last sentence I wrote, and I wrote it today, was I was feeling a kind of seasick. I was feeling a kind of sea sick. So the, the movement of the sea, the ocean, you mean? No, no, no. It's because the information is quite hard to uh, devour. Okay. <laughs> We're looking forward. <laughs> yes, it yeah. will come um, not in English. It uh, will come in um, in uh, actually Finnish first and then maybe French. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. It comes, it comes. Okay. We we have finished so uh, to to read uh, this book and uh, that, that was fantastic. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. And how are you? How about you? Was your tour, because last time you were getting on tour on USA and uh, yes, lots of yes, conferences. I, I, I went to America, that's right. Yeah. And it was uh, very, very, uh, it was a month. It was 40 lectures. It was uh, 10 flight tickets. Wow. It was 17 hours of train ride. It was several cars. It was really... Uh, around the whole uh, America, Alaska, Canada, America. What a travel. Oh, yeah. Big one. But I can tell a little about that travel. Yeah. I yeah. can re repeat it, sort of. Yeah. So yeah. We, start, we start in our physical world, this physical world. And then to get out of this physical world, we have to go with our consciousness, merge into something. It is not so important actually what it is, but we have to merge into something. Often it can be something that dissolves. It can be snow that is melting. It can be a candlelight flame that is burning. It can be flames or burning wood or something like that. It can also be dying animals or dying plants or dying trees in the autumn. Um, and then <clears throat> we merge into this. Very, very concentrated. And suddenly you start to see some movements. And these are the elemental beings. The physical appearance of our of the creation is uh, Maya is an illusion. It's actually these elemental beings who are real that is behind this, and they are of three kinds. But that I will say a little later. So when you merge, you start to see this movement. When you merge into the movement, you start to see actually forms and faces, 
or the elemental beings. Uh, the first realm you go into is called the third elemental realm that is dominated by a certain kind of elemental beings, which is nature beings, it could be flower uh, elemental beings. Also, health and disease is, um, is, um, is in this realm, because when you see these elemental beings in a human being or an animal, you can see that some of them are creating disease, and then you can manipulate them actually directly when you can see them, and thus heal disease. If you go further, merge further, you come to the second realm of the elemental beings, the second realm of the elemental world, and that is dominated by the elemental beings of the atoms and the molecules. molecules. And they are very different from the nature beings, very different. They are called arimanic elemental beings, and they look like spiders. Mm. Then you can merge even further and further. And then from this second realm, you can actually influence the molecules, the physical substances. In the third, I told said that you can influence the action of the elemental beings, health and disease. That is called uh, hygienic occultism. In the second, where you can actually manipulate the material itself, materia itself, which is called mechanical occultism. And then you go further on, and then you come to the first realm, which is dominated by Assyric elemental beings which live in vacuum, um, they are quite terrible looking. They are very scary looking. And they have to do with birth and death. So if you can go there and manipulate them, you can actually manipulate death. Of course, death on distance. Then you come to this threshold, or at least I did, when you go through the first elemental realm, we talked about this last time, I think. Yeah. And then you meet the guardian of the threshold, which is which uh, he presented himself as Vidar. Vidar, I didn't know at that time when he presented himself as that. So I found out that that is a new archangel. He raised to the level of archangel uh, in the beginning of our the 1900 and he was fully active around 1970 and Rudolf Steiner also uh, say that he is uh, the new sort of archangel of the spiritual world that can present us to the Christ consciousness so uh, after being then taught by Vidar for a considerable time, it must have been several months, half a year, because you are not allowed to continue before he teaches you what you need to continue. And this is individual. Do you see, that means I get one teaching, you get another teaching, you get the third teaching. We get what we need. And then we continue into the spiritual world. And I guess that is about there we, we stopped last time. Then at a certain time, I was given the choice to go into the spiritual mysteries or the earth mysteries. At least I got that. There were two paths two roads, one into the spiritual mysteries and one into the earth mysteries. And it showed that the earth mysteries are actually very, very, very deep. So I was led into the layers of the earth, deeper and deeper into the earth. And in the seventh layer, I met a huge guardian a huge guardian, greater than Vidar. And 
I asked, and that was definitely a, a, a female creature. And I asked her what her name was, and she only answered the third. So I um, didn't know what she was. I never heard about this third. So it took me a few days to, to realize, and then I, by some way of remembrance, something, I said, also, Anna the third. And she nodded very vigorously. And Anna the third showed, well, she is actually the grandmother of Jesus, the mother oh. of Mary. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, she presented herself as being the passage, the portal between the whole physical experience and the devocanic experience. I had never heard about Anna the Third. In German, Anna Selbstritt. Herself the Third, Selbstritt. Um, uh, so uh, Rudolf Steiner had never talked about her. I had I knew nothing about her. But a few days later, I gave a, a course on this in Bergen, Bergen, West Coast, Norway. And there was an architect. And he said, at, and he had been studying Chartres in, in France for many years. And then he said, the whole Chartres is actually the feminine mysteries. And on the northern wall, which is the feminine, the feminine within the feminine, there are two oak doors. And between these oak doors, above them, is a huge statue of Anna the third. And this is not mentioned by anybody, I think. So the teachers in Chartres, they must have known why did I else make this huge portrait of Anna? And she overlooks everybody who go in the, into the cathedral and everybody who go out. Just as in reality. Just an in, as in reality. Um, this is a picture of Anna the Third. First, there you have the Jesus, then you have Mary, and then Anna. And you see how great she is, how big. Yeah. yeah. It's not a, it's not a small thing. And the teachers in Chartres or the constructors of Chartres put her there just as she is in reality, in the seventh layer of the earth, watching everybody who entered Devakan and everybody who come out of Devakan. So I asked her, can I enter Devakan? And she said, yes, be my guest. So I, through her, I entered Devakan, which is the upper spiritual world. And there you could actually follow Devakan till before the creation of Saturn, before the, the, the physical experience that we live in was started, actually before Astronomy said that time was created. Still, you could go before that. And then you saw that the whole Devakanic experience was also a sort of time. But the time there was fourfold. which I cannot explain, but it was very clear. Here, you have a timeline. And the most advanced say that there is a counter timeline too. So the timeline is two. Direction. There in Devakan, it is four one way and four the other way, so actually eightfold. Mm. Uh, and I must say that that is too advanced for me at the start. It's, uh, present moment, so I have to ponder that for uh, 20, 30 years more, and then uh, we can have a talk. So, um, and there I also was taught, and that is uh, just the recent, um, recent uh, knowledge that I got, actually the few last days, 
because there you could you could you could actually experience why the human being was created at all why we are here why it is, why because at one point there were no humans in the beginning of saturn no humans and suddenly we are here so why and strangely enough i told a friend of mine this and he said well sort of the last sentences of his book uh, how do you obtain knowledge of the higher world steiner said that humans were created because the gods were stuck and that is what they taught me there before he said that um the gods I was taken back way before Saturn and saw how the adversarial forces darkened the reality of the spiritual world, of the gods. And they got stuck and they had to find something. They had to create a being that had a free consciousness that had been developing in love. So then they created the human being which could develop a free love and they also made a, a part of this human being called the astral the astral world or the astral body or the astral world which they told me there was not necessary for them they could very well do without this astra, astral world. But the astral world was necessary for us to fight because the astral world was the fall of humanity. That's where sin entered. Because the astral world had to do with feelings and passions and blah, blah, blah. So then I realized that The gods did not create us before because they loved us. They created us before because they needed us as foot soldiers to fight the adversarial forces. And they put us through the fall, the Luciferic temptation, the astral world, to train. It's almost like we have soldiers in the military and we throw them out in the forest in the winter or in the rain and and say, so, okay, now you have to crawl in the dirt and uh, learn to fight. And the last, when I realized all this, this is just because they need us to be foot soldiers. And I wrote the last sentence for today. I was feeling a kind of seasick. We are just a necessity for the gods. Yeah. But that is not, it's okay. I, I get over it. Uh, but I, I, I did like to hear that. Yeah, of course. Um, let, let me tell you just, uh, do, do you know this book? No. So, Grand. oh, wow. <laughs> just what I talk about. No, I. No, oh. but I, I would like to show it to you because I connected with book. It's just a. So a few, few words about that because you're just talking about that. So yes. that sounds crazy to me. But um, um, this book is uh, um, really interesting and you can find it in uh, in English because the the writer, is uh, her name is Claire Hart Song. I, I will send it to you if you, if you want. Yes. Because uh, to me, uh, it was an extraordinary meeting with this woman. So, and I will be really pleased to have your um, feelings about this book because uh, there are few people who have read this book and uh, uh, eff effectivement, uh, her life was so um, incredible. So, and yeah. her teachings was uh, really- Very, very interesting. Thank very you. Interesting. Yeah. 
you're you're very welcome. So I'm really really happy you you're talking about her because because you know they have no idea about this in Germany or in Norway or in America. They only know it in France, in Chartres, mm -hmm. in the teachers of Chartres. She has written down a second book after this one, and he's a uh, crazy uh, too. I I got this one too, but I don't I don't know where he. Where he is in our bibliotheque. <laughs> yeah. But this one was just behind me. So. Yeah. Okay. Send me the name and these things. Thank you. Very yeah, of good. Of course. I must read that because Anna has become a very important. Well, she, she of course, said that she is not at all a human being. Mm. She might be the grandmother of, of Jesus, but she's not a human being. She is a she's a great cosmic being yes mm. she is yeah. the, the English uh, book is the grandmother of Jesus a mm. message a message of wisdom and love mm. uh, I, I won't tell you about the book but um, good I it, look forward to it, yeah but it, it's fantastic uh, yeah. It's really fantastic. Yeah. But she is also a fantastic personality. She yeah. is so loving and so accepting and so enormously huge. Yeah. And she she actually oversees the whole passage between the material illusion of this world and the Devakanic world. She's writing down uh lots of details about how long she has lived on earth yeah. uh, at this moment with Essenian uh, people and yeah. she is describing all about m mystery school and yeah. all travels they they have to do with uh, the Essenian and she's explaining a lot of different things when she has to leave her body to make he her organic physical body uh, reboot and restart you know uh, mm. because she needs to she lived so long time i mean in 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 this book she she's re she's saying that she lived uh about 600 700 years mm. so <laughs> that yeah. sounds crazy but she's really explaining so much things this is really interesting very good very good yeah I'm excited. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good. I'm, I'm happy. So um, I, I, I'm really happy about uh, your last book, and I can't wait to read the, the third one. But maybe let's talk about this one, because yes. Yes. I thought to, to Norbert, that was crazy. I mean, each one page should might be a show, a whole show, <laughs> because yeah. you have so many information. And wow, we we would like to ask you first, I think, what do you think what Vidar or Balder or uh, I mean the, the the Vulcanian people, I don't what do you think we should speak about first? Because we couldn't talk about everything in this book. And so much today is so important. So yeah. what do you think we should start about? I think, I say, I think, and I have been thinking all the time. The most important is not the knowledge. The mm -hmm. most important is the path, the walking this path, the method, because yeah. today everybody need to go that path. We need to meet Vidar, and then Anna or whatever. Every one of us. And the information, the knowledge we get, that is individualized. That is what we, as I said, you and me need to, to, uh, to go on further into the spiritual world. So the knowledge, as you said, is much on every page, but that is only what I received or I got. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is important for me. And maybe... For some others, of course, it's interesting enough. But the most important is that people start to train the merging. Yeah. To go into the elemental world. And that is the important thing. Yes. Thank you so much. So 
thank you. What what do you? I, I it was just to make a link with um with this uh, book encounters with Vida, and you talked about Chartres, and yeah. you had also some a paragraph about labyrinths. So, do you? Slovetsky Islands. For yeah. example, so do yeah. you? What kind of thing could you do with Chartres, with the labyrinth, and Anna, for example, here? Um, can you specify the question again, please? Yeah. Um, you have Chartres. How do you interpret? You have labyrinth. You have Anna. Yeah, the, lim the limberate, for example, in Chartres. Yeah. As uh, the representation and what it could bring us. I think that the as 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 again actually, I think the meeting with these personalities, the meeting with Vidar, the meeting with Anna, is the important, not actually what it, uh, not the knowledge and not what it brings sort of by itself. It is the. You see, today there is so much information, so much knowledge, but we have today to walk the path. Mm. What experience we could have to live through those experiences, right? Yeah, and then you get the exper experiences you need and not what I need. Of course. Mm. And and this is, um, this is what I... Uh, now when I give lectures or workshops I say now we do this you have to go home and train this merging into into things the white or the snow or the candle or the trees or the yeah and I demand that one do that at least 12 minutes a day sit down and merge and then after a while, you start to see the elemental beings, everybody, actually everybody who has really trained this merging within a few weeks, they start to see the elemental beings. And then you can go on and meet Vidar and Anna and these things. Can you maybe say something about the different uh, ways or different paths? of initiation because we are talking about the process but maybe the different uh, streams or are... yeah for, for people that maybe don't know what which stream is meaning and yeah there are there it is said that there is a eastern path of initiation the southern path the western part the northern path and the middle path and i have come to understand that the technique in these paths is the same that is the merging mm -hmm. in the east you sit with closed eyes and you go inside yourself you go inside you go inside in the cells in the blood in the organs or in the emptiness you merge into the microcosm in the northern, you merged into, into nature. Or you may merge into whatever, the, but always it is the merging. You have to go somewhere to do something. If I stay here, nothing will happen. Now, for example, I merge into my liver. And then you come into the cosmos of the liver and you can see what elemental beings, you can see what, what was in the past, what is in the future, you can go into that. Then you can merge into your kidney, you can merge into your heart. Then I can open my eyes and can merge into a tree or the darkness, now it is dark here. You can um, do this merging. So, and Steiner, when he described what he did, he always did this merging. Everybody do this merging. Even a book like Carlos Castaneda, he say he moved his assemblage points 
there or there. That means he moved his concentration here or there and merged into that point or merged into the hand or the arm or anything. And then you become one with that. And then you can ex uh, go on with this uh, connection and then go further into the spiritual world or the elemental world or the third realm of the elemental, the second realm, the first realm the astral even, or the etheric world, or the devakanic world. So this merging is so important. And this merging is to concentrate. You have to concentrate on one thing. That is actually the, the foundation of all meditation. You concentrate, and you become one with. But you must keep your consciousness. You must be aware, you must not faint out or become like a, like a medium or to do not know what they say or, or such. You have to be conscious. That is important today. About the resurrection body and the death body. Oh, yes. Would you, would you please <laughs> speak about a little bit about that? Because I, I heard about what's called the light body in fact, Vida told you about the resurrection body, but yeah. I, I really do not know at all about this death body. No. It, it seems to be okay. I mean, but um, so please, can you yeah. tell us more about that? When you come, as I told you, when you come into the second realm of the elemental world, there you have the so-called atoms, molecules, you have sort of the foundation of the creation, the body. And these consist of elemental beings that are spider-like. I mentioned that earlier. These spider beings, they are, they belong to the Arimanic forces. That's why Arimanic forces, they controlled the physical material. So, if this, these elemental beings, they can be changed in two ways. When you see them, you can actually change them. When you become aware of them. All elemental beings that you become aware of, you can do something with you can, you can move them, you can change them, you can ask them to do things. There is an um, old shaman, shamanistic uh, method here in Scandinavia, which is called Said, where you take elemental beings and you ask them to go and do this or that, or even kill people. That's the same in the, in the in the south, which is called uh, black magic, or those who put needles in dolls, you know, and this. Yeah. So then you go into the second realm that is important, and there you then change the elemental beings into what Steiner called uh, Christianized elemental beings, or put in a moral in them, you can say, or love. You can you change them in a certain way that they become activated in love, and the and this is actually there is one elemental being for every atom. But every time you pour love into these elemental beings, you create a body that can resurrect. Mm. which do not die when you die. Sorry for my... That is, what, that is what Christ did, you know, when he died, he could resurrect and he could show his body and uh, because he had poured love into all these elemental beings. But the adversarial forces, they have another strategy. They change it, they lock it sort of into their own world, which is called the Eighth Sphere. Eighth sphere is a place where you cannot get out. 
and materia every time the materia is then locked into the arimanic sort of consciousness they stay there and they build up this eight sphere over time and if that is becomes huge you you sort of becomes a glow by itself where you cannot get out and then you are locked there for a very long time maybe eternity that is so important the and ruler steiner say that also the arimanic forces they take material all the time from us to build up this eight sphere and we have to take material and make push light into it or con light con love consciousness and then make the resurrection body that is a resurrection body and this death body is actually what i call this what the arimanic beings do they make sort of your body fit for the eighth sphere so when you die or when the earth is finished you are sort of bound there mm -hmm. instead of moving on i i have just a question before you keep going but it's about the spiders uh, i mean which different kind of by spiders because we we could have lots of different spiders i mean so how do you know that this one or this other one is arimanic um because i mean there are so many uh different types yeah you, you know they are all arimanics in the second realm of the elemental world they are all arimanic yes okay i mean do you have a question and the interesting thing is that and that is quite interesting you know uh have have you any of you studied sort of uh, chemistry mm -hmm. and you know that in uh, an atom there are eight spheres seven shells and the kernel yeah and when atoms are uh, make uh, molecules uh, a, a hydrogen atom go on to an uh, oxygen atom and they they sort of hook with these spheres they hook together and that is exactly what the spiders do they have how many legs does a spider have eight the same number as every atom and how do the what do the do the spiders have in the tip of their legs small hooks yeah. yes because that's why they cannot walk on glass like a fly but they fall down because a fly have a glue and the spiders have only hooks so they hook together in huge conglomerations that is actually that is the molecules mm. and all these atom like elemental beings they look like spiders and they are the arimanic uh, elemental beings so what can uh, because people are listening to us you know right now and so can you tell us something to help i mean because if people are starting to see those spiders uh, it could be really impressive about what could we do about that you know so do you have any information to to transform the situation in something yeah i did I, I did an experiment uh, in totnes in england that is the southwest england in uh, that who goes out there in the atlantic yeah totnes and i was I had a, a seminar with um and biodynamic farmers and uh, such and the air in the room was getting very heavy it, it the oxygen was sort of used up so then i made an interesting experiment i went into the second realm and went to an oxygen atom or molecule and open the middle for the christ force and the air was immediately refreshed mm. so you have to 
if Ariman takes it, it is death, you know. Mm. If you are filling it with what I call the Christ consciousness, or you might also say cosmic love or or, or something like that. Uh, but I prefer to call it actually Christ consciousness. Mm. Then you you re revitalize the oxygen oxygen. So this is an ex example of it was made a death body, a death air, because people got headache and it was heavy air. But then you actually take and insert the Christ consciousness and make it a resurrection body, a resurrection air, re a resurrection oxygen molecule or atom. Mm. You see, that is a very good example. And you can do that with everything. But you cannot do it from here, from this world. You have to go into the elemental world to do it. And that is why Steiner called it, then you can do occultism. That is sort of magic. When you go into the third realm and manipulate the elemental beings there, and put light into their middle, Christ into the middle, you can influence health and disease. If you go into the second realm, into the atoms, you can you can change the physical substance itself, and that is called mechanical occultism. If you go into the first realm, you can actually influence life and death, and that is called eugenic occultism. Afghanic. Afghanic means uh, how to create life or death. Mm. So the important thing, and so again, you cannot do anything of what I tell you about now if you don't walk the path. And that's why I said in the beginning, that is important for me, that people train to walk the path. Mm. Because then they can do these things. And then they can create a, a, a resurrection body or resurrection substance or and not give over to the adversarial forces who wants to create death substance, death air, death body, and so on. Mm. That's really interesting. Thank you very much for, yeah. for your answer. You and uh, yeah, yeah. The... This building of the, these different bodies and the eight sphere, it, it quite something not, not so easy to understand and to understand, um, where we have some kind of responsibility or power to mm. how, how we manage it in this building. Yeah. yeah. And to manage it, you have to go into the second realm of the elemental world. As I said, you cannot do it from here. All is actually where you are, where you walk on the path. That decides what you can do or not can do. It's like you sit in your house. If you never go out, you cannot do anything. You cannot even buy milk. You have to go out and go to a shop, and then you can buy milk or bread. But if you don't go there, you cannot buy anything, and then you die. <laughs> I'm hunger after a while. Um, I I have another question, but I'm not sure it was it will linked in that case to eight sphere. It was about the etherization of the blood. Hmm. And mm, that's a good question. Maybe maybe you can talk about that, please. Hmm. It's linked about the Asuric, right? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you see the, yes, that is uh, a good uh, comment, actually. The um, the Luciferic elemental beings, they are, that's from the third realm, they are not linked with the blood, not linked with the, with the bones. They are more linked with the function of the, the functions of the body. The Arimanic is more linked with the, uh, harder substances but the asuric in the first realm is linked with the blood itself 
and the I consciousness. That is why in COVID, that was an Asuric disease. Asuric mm. beings was mm. mediating that. And that's why it caused so much bleeding and change in menstrual bleeding. Or mm. personally, I bled four months from the nose when I had COVID. Mm. And that is, uh, they are attacking the blood. And you can actually say it in the same way. There is a war of the blood. There is a, there is a, the Suric beings, they want to take the blood and make you not free, not fill it with love or light or Christ consciousness. And they want then to destroy the blood and take that to the eighth sphere. You can, you can say it that way to understand it better from what we have talked about. And then you have the opposite when you then are able from the heart to fill the blood with um, at the middle, the etheric, the light in the middle, the Christ consciousness in the middle. And that is an etherization of the blood. Mm. It can be described in different ways, but from the background we have done now, I think that is the best way to describe it. Mm. So you see, you can actually talk about the etherization of the blood. You can talk about the etherization of the muscles. <laughs> you can talk about the etherization of the tendons or the bones, the etherization of anything that is getting Christ consciousness into these things and not let them be taken by the Asuric or Aramanic or Luciferic powers. Can we say that it would be to, to find the middle point from the yes. blood? Okay. Yes, absolutely. When I did that in uh, Southwest England, and I went to this oxygen molecule, I found the middle point. And then I opened the middle point in the molecule. And that is what led to a, a freshening of the air. You, you told us, like, we must talk about what Vidar told you about what human beings needed to be aware of. Yeah. And uh, so I, I just would like to say those uh, sentences yes. maybe you will say a few words please. i will i will okay so uh, and, and then i first first must say that what we that wanted me to be aware of yeah okay is primarily what i need to be aware of yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't know what you need to be aware of yeah but i can the one most one of the most important things to be aware of is is actually a, a, a fundament for for the acceptance of Christ consciousness. Because um, in Oslo, Rudolf Steiner gave a lecture called uh, the Fifth Gospel, where he described, and this is five lectures but he uses four and a half page to describe how Jesus was depressed. And that is the last thing that happened before he received the Christ in the Jordan. So why was Jesus depressed? Because he went around that whole area, you know, whole Middle East, he traveled quite much, and he saw that all the medical systems, all the philosophical systems, all the shamanistic systems, all the religious systems, they all just translocated the demons. Mm -hmm. They pushed them out to the others. And that is still the case today. Mm -hmm. All medical systems, if done in a normal way, you might say, translocate disease. Mm. Homeopathy, acupuncture, craniosacral therapy, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
including also a lot of anthroposophic medicine, they translocate, they push the diseases over to others. And according to Vidar, this is the most the one most important thing to realize today, and you cannot change it before you realize it, of course, we must realize that our doctors and therapists and homeopaths and acupuncturists in 99% just push the thesis over to others. Mm. If we don't realize that, we close ourselves to the Christ consciousness. And Rudolf Steiner described exactly the same in this fifth gospel. He described that Jesus was saw this happening. He saw all around him. Lucifer and Arman was running away to the others. And he got depressed. And he went to his mother, Mary, and said, there is no hope for the world. The darkness is th thickening. It gets worse and worse. All our sins, we are not transforming anything. We just push it away to the others. Mm. And when he had said this, and Steiner described this over four and a half, four and a half page, and immediately when he had said this to Maria, he went to Jordan and was baptized by John the Baptist. And then the answer to his depression sort of came by the incarnation of the Christ, the Dove. And that is the answer to the translocation. That force can do a transformation of the diseases or the demons or whatever. And that is what I talked about before. That is to open the middle and invite Christ into the middle. Mm. And so when much. I talk about this for therapists, they don't like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But at the same time, so many people do not realize that, that we do have experience to understand and make our like vision. You, you told us about clairvoyance, clairaudience. And if we do not going through inside we couldn't understand how co complementarity each things on earth and each things on these realms i mean all mm. realms uh, mm. it's necessary to 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 go through our path in order to make transformation and feeling responsible for our energies and and everything about us i mean mm. even the situation that we have created before we really need to going through all these understandings to be able to build and create something better for for us and children of course so i mean this is so strong and i was uh, i was really happy to to read it in in this book because um it's it's really something so difficult to explain because we could have do worse some words to explain things but people do just i mean people have to no they don't have to accept what we're gonna say they do have to do their own experiences mm. but like we are <laughs> trying to talk about things we could only say to them that we all have to do this experience on our own and to do our own research inside of us, inside of these realms. And this is this is so huge. I mean, like you just said, so many people do not realize yet how we do have to feel responsible for energies and responsible for taking care about what mm. we could deal with this mm. so thank you so, so much because you 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 said so the translocation of adversarial forces the total interconnectedness of us all the necessity of the etheric blood 
the dark plans of the adversarial forces, especially the Arimanic and the Assyric. So we just talked about that. So now, um, are you, I, oh, I have a question. Are you able to see the light body of people and the death body of people, like you, you, you said? Yes. When you go into the second elemental realm, you okay. can see if the heart changed. Okay. In what direction? And also in the third realm, you can see what is called true Christianized elemental beings. You can see it in medicines. You can see it uh, in disease and health, and in the first realm, where that is a little more tricky. So I don't, we don't talk about the first realm now. I guess. Okay. Thank you. So, after I would like to to speak about the description of the structure of the carbon. You you you've. The carbon structure molecule. Oh, carbon, yeah. yeah. Sorry. The atom. <laughs> the atom of the structure of the carbon. Yeah. Because you, you were talking about the... the Fourfoldness. The, yeah. And yeah. The ternaire to... Threefold and fourfold. Yeah, threefold and fourfold. Yes. Um, and this is a thing also I try to talk uh, about because um, we have the threefoldness of the soul, thinking, feeling, willing, and we also have the threefoldness of society into the law part, into the spiritual part, and into the uh, production part. But Vidar was very, uh, very. Uh, important for him to, to state that this threefoldness, which so many, especially anthroposophists, talk about and work with, is now becoming a fourfoldness. And I had long time observed that myself in the soul. It is not only thinking, feeling, willing, but there is a fourth pa uh, part that is connected to time. Mm -hmm. And I was a little unsure about it, but Vidar called, said that we don't have a single word for that yet. So he called it Time Karma Christ. Okay. It has to do with what is developing, a cause effect, cause effect. It was what is developing through time. And in society, that is also quite interesting because there is a growing area which is not um, law or uh, not uh, production and not spirituality, but it is called virtual reality. Hmm. And very many young people today, they spend a lot of time in this reality. And, for, and it is reality. It creates elemental beings, you see. There are millions, billions of elemental beings created in this realm. So this is a reality, and it is not encompassed or, or incorporated in the other three sort of classical realms. And if we do not uh, become aware of this fourth part, both in the soul and in society, we actually lose, lose it. Because the most important for these areas is that we penetrate it with our consciousness. If we do not, it is sort of lost. Yes, Norbert? I have, I have a question about um, this uh, fourfold man, for example. And yeah. do, do you think that it's uh, linked? to maybe an opening on a, of another realm as we had the, the three realms and yes yes will it be linked to to another opening of a fourth realm yeah i think what? that is, virtual reality is the fourth realm and it is opening and we are uh, we uh, as it creates elemental beings 
it actually creates reality. And there are so many stories or films or whatever books now where they describe that this reality, this sort of virtual reality, becomes reality. Even when this uh, fantastic figure come out of the computer, sort of, and walk around, it is sort of fantasy, but it is reality. And this is an opening. We are creating a fourth realm, which is real, becomes reality because it creates elemental beings, and that is reality, and it becomes bigger and bigger. Yes. And we have to deal with that. Do you think, uh, or do you have some perception about some kind of this type of entities in this, this realm and which kind yeah. of duality? Uh, well, it's like time and karma. It is like um, if we leave all the lawmaking only to uh, those who have other ideas about reality, then we sort of lose the fight in, in, in the law. I mean, in, in law life. If we leave the production only to those who want to earn money, then we produce only useless things or plastic toys or whatever. We have to go in and do something there to create something that we think is right in spiritual life, in law life, in mechanical life, in factory life, and so on. And that is why we have actually to go into this, this uh, virtual reality and create something there that is good. We have to go there, not only stay outside and say, oh, I don't like this and I don't deal with, I don't look at computer or I, I don't want to deal with this. We have to do, like we do now, we are now in a virtual reality. We are not in real, we are not talking in real life, we are talking in virtual reality and we are discussing morality, we are discussing the elemental realms. Just by this talk we create elemental beings in that realm which counteract the adversarial elemental beings. So this is very important, what we do here now. Of course. More important than you think, maybe. But maybe you think it is, so that's why you do it. <laughs> you perceive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, few pages after. So, I, I just wanted to start about talking about uh, the doppelganger. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, there was just uh, lots of sentences i mean uh, to this part about pages you know about 62 63 and more and more and you you've talking about the site for i, don't, I mean sorry i i don't want to be strict about what i'm just gonna say because you will explain more than me but i'm just taking out some few words and please mm. correct mm. myself after so at this moment, you are talking about, uh, before double ganger, you are talking about the sight to Scorpion and Gemini. And after you are talking about hearing for Virgo, which no adversarial force ah. is allowed to enter. Oh. <laughs> Can you say something about that? Because we were wondering, because we know Love that you. some people yeah. could, could have some clairvoyance, all right, but... La, as you already told us last time, so many clairvoyant are not at all clairvoyant. <laughs> mm. But uh, what do you mean when hearing Virgo, which no adversarial force is allowed to enter? It's really interesting. <laughs> it is really interesting and it is very complicated and it is very <laughs> important. And I would like to say it in an easier way. Okay. That is what we are here for, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. And that is what 
another very strong concern that Vidar uh, presents, and that is today that the adversarial forces more and more are taking over the clairvoyant abilities. I first time I saw it was on the trick in Oslo, uh, little train in Oslo, where a man was looking at his mobile phone and suddenly I saw his, he created another eye behind the eye and that is an Arimanic eye. And then suddenly he created a I be fr in front of the eye, which was a Luciferic eye, and then I looked at his phone, and then it was some pornographic. That was a Luciferic eye. Okay. He was looking at some woman. So these adversarial forces, they are able to create their own eyes within us. It's a little like this death body and resurrection body. The adversarial forces, they create a death body within us. Mm. We have to create a resurrection body within us. Mm. We have the eyes, the aromatic forces are creating an aromatic eye behind our physical eye and the luciferic forces in front of our physical eye. And why I talk about the eye and why it was that I saw the eye first is that the eye is the most easy to make this uh, their own uh, observation and their own sense organs. Mm. They have much more difficulty uh, difficulties in creating the ears like that. Mm. So when you hear, you are much more sure that it is not uh, attacked or interfered in by the adversarial forces. And that is why I have seen more and more um, clairvoyant persons that think they are clairvoyant, but it is the adversarial forces, especially the Assyric beings, who give them their clairvoyance. Mm. And that is so important to Vida. He said, this is so important. We have, if we do not realize this or do something with it then we all will end up as clairvoyants but fake or false clairvoyants mm. and interesting enough Rudolf Steiner he, he said that when Ariman is coming incarnating in this world he will create and he said a school in clairvoyance but it will be a false clairvoyance Mm. That means that everybody see what they see and they, everybody disagree because all what all that is seen is different from person to person because it is that's part of the adversarial forces to not be together and have the same experience. And that can today be seen uh, and that will and that that you create, different ways of seeing things that creates a diversion and you can see that in America very many say okay this is true the other are fake news no this is true the others are fake news I mean they get more before they often agreed a little about the facts did the president say this or this, or did he not? Today it seems that it's totally in chaos. <laughs> they even deny that he said this or that. Mm. And that is part of the influence of the Assyric beings in our sense perception. And that creates a false clairvoyance. So in the end it will be not only disagree on facts but it will be disagree i see the moon there no i see the moon there it's almost like this uh this film uh look up have you seen that this uh, meteor who is destroy no, we, to destroy we, the earth we, ju we just heard about it but uh yeah didn't, uh, yeah and, and that is actually the same they have they have grasped the essence 
there is a meteor on the way to the Earth, and then certain forces say, no, 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 it's not. No, 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 it's not. And it's, they create a, a folk movement, which is said, don't look up, don't look up. No, no, don't look up. It's uh, it's wrong to look up because, and then in the end, a man looks up and says, "Well, there is a myth here." <laughs> and of course, the Earth is crushed by that. Everybody is killed. <laughs> what? So, what about those situation about the Virgo? Yeah, then you had the, <clears throat> but because. Every sense organ has, uh, there are 12 sense organs and there are 12 etheric streams from the cosmos and 12 zodiacal signs. So that has to do with the, the uh, Virgo and the Pisces, which has to do with the herring. And they are sort of protected by Maria and the Christ. And then you have Sagittarius and Gemini, who is actually protected by Lucifer and Ariman, and that has to do with the seeing. So that is why this comes in. There are, but to understand all that, you have to go through all the twelve sense organ and how these different uh, constellations or zodiacal signs work and not work. So, so that is a little complicated here. Mm. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So, what about the doppelganger? <laughs> about the... The doppelganger. Yes, the doppelganger. <laughs> the doppelganger is... There is a Luciferic doppelganger and an Arimanic doppelganger. Okay. And also, some say there is an electronic doppelganger and a karmic doppelganger. Mm. Doppelganger in how I see it, uh, and I try now to s explain it understandable, because it can be very difficult to, to realize. We are creating, I take an example from, we are creating a resurrection body. We are creating a death body. The Ariman, Arimanic forces are creating an Arimanic body, a Luciferic, a Luciferic body. By there are Luciferic thoughts. Let's say we think a Luciferic thought, a lie. I am very beautiful and young. That is a Luciferic thought. Uh, two plus two is five. That's an uh, Romantic lie. So if I think these Luciferic lies, then you create these elemental beings who make up a Body, who make up a anger ganger, who make up a, a entity actually, and let's say you you create you let's say you think you you lie a lot. Let's say you lie a lot, uh, and then you create this body of lies, a lie body that is a Luciferic double ganger part, part of it. And then this Luciferic doppelganger take over. It becomes, it can st stop your thoughts or it can dominate you. If you have read the uh, book, The Doppelganger of Dostoevsky, he has mm -hmm. written a whole book about the doppelganger. Okay. And uh, it comes, he, he was walking in, uh, in Moscow or St. Petersburg, and then suddenly he saw a man that was exactly like himself. Mm. And this man went into a, a restaurant and ordered 12 pirogues and just ate them and went out. And then he came in and he was charged. He had to pay for them. This is a very interesting uh, book. So sort of his wanting to have pirogues, you know, pirog is a Russian sort of pancake like okay. cake. Yeah. And, um, and uh, this creates then, and um, probably an Luciferic doppelganger that order it and just eat it or 
and he has to sort of pay it. He, he creates a body within himself that is, if it gets too strong, it dominates. And that again, this is, you see, all our thoughts, all our actions, all our feelings, they really create elemental beings. That is real. And this elemental being is the foundation of bodies. So our physical body is elemental beings. Mm -hmm. If they are Christ-filled or if they are not, that depend that makes our purpose different. So if we create a body of lies, it, there is a psychologist who's talk about the pain body. Who was that? Yeah, a pain body. Mm -hmm. If we think about our pain all the time, oh, I am so, oh, I feel pain. Oh, poor me, poor me. Oh, I, feel, oh, I have pain in my finger and blah, blah, blah. You know, you create a pain body and it takes over. You become a victim. Yeah. You become a, a whimper, mm. you know, like a child. <laughs> uh, and, and this creates this uh, doppelganger. They create beings within you that mm. carry, that yourself have created. Mm. Or you can have created them in former earlier lives, or you can have, yeah. you can take over others too. And then you are bound by these elemental beings, these doppelgangers. That is how I, I, I see that, the existence of doppelgangers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ronnie. Maybe we we could talk about the... I do not know how to say it or pronounce it in English, but about the ear, about... What, earring sense. Earring sense, but about the cochlea. Cochlea? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so please. Cochlea. Cochlea. Because you you written down about the subject that Vidar and, and Balder, because at this moment, if I remember fine, this is Balder teaching uh, and let yourself dealing with your own development of this earring. And I have a question about uh, before letting you speak about that is as you said just a few minutes ago we could hear like a dead people talking to us we do not know which people are talking to us if we are not in the realm viewing right but sometimes we focus on the, our day and sometimes we could hear something without knowing which is about or but if I understood, but maybe you will clear what I'm going to say. When you have developed this earring, you've talked about the cone or something that you have made up. Yeah, sort of the, trumpet. Sort the, of trumpet. Yeah, the Sasrara chakra, right? And I mean... It is not chakra. That is important. Okay. It is not chakra it is actually a structure in the brain that okay. you see it is so important to the spiritual world that they have if they do not interfere with our brain structure we will be uh, we will subdue or we will be uh, fooled by clairvoyance as i i told you mm. so Balder, which is working with Vidar, he will bring the new clairvoyance, which is a clairaudience. And when you are on that threshold, when you meet Vidar, Balder will start to work with you and transform the brain structure so you can hear the talking of the gods or the spiritual beings, yes. So you can focus attention that when you are hearing straight by this vertical way to hear uh, you know that it is from this vertical it means that if you hear something on your left or on your right 
you could be sure or not that it is not this one and you don't know what it is. Yeah, you, you can feel level. that. I, I can feel that if it comes from okay. here or from here or from here, yes. Yes, okay. And more and more, uh, before when I was younger, I it was always seeing, always seeing. Mm. And I was not sure what did I see, what did I not see, I didn't understand always and so on and so on. But when you hear, now it's more and more hearing, you can see, but the hearing becomes more dominant. Mm. And then it gives you meaning. It gives you understanding. Mm. And the most important is that it doesn't uh, cheat you, that it doesn't fool you. Mm. Because the adversarial forces have not the means to interfere in the hearing, as they do in the, in the seeing. Mm. That is for me the most important. Mm. So the, the the spiritual world is actually intervening in this. They are creating this new ability in human beings. The clear audience. Mm. That's that sounds that That's sounds great. really interesting. So they do help, you see, they do they don't leave us. It's like Lord of the Rings, do we leave them for their own battle? No, we help them. Yeah, And then the elves come and help us. Uh, they do help us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Maya. you so much. We can have a talk when the, the next book it can. I can actually. No, I cannot send it to you. We have to print it first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The publisher is not happy if I give out the manuscript. Sure. <laughs> for sure so thank you thank you so much dr ari torresen we are really honored to have welcomed you again and we will really be uh happy to welcome you again for the next one because i can't wait to read it uh, yeah. too thank you if uh, you could read finish you could read it in uh, two weeks well that, that could be very great uh, and German is also uh, quite uh, updated. Yeah. The English will be uh, uh, next autumn. Okay. And maybe we make a French copy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, on working. On working yeah. for sure. Yeah. And thank you so much for well, your humor and and the way you are written down uh, your books, because this is really interesting uh, to to be a part of your story. You, mm. you always mean that this is your experience. And thank you for that, because uh, we do see so many uh, teaching and that people would like to convince us about things or about that. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the way you you read uh, you've written your books and and love your humors inside of it uh I, I don't know which part you are talking about well when i do know these things what could i do but just make coffee <laughs> yes <laughs> that was really really fun and we laugh at the at the same moment of your books so yeah. that was really you really see the nice. book all these three books are written as a diary almost yeah and, and we could see that so thank no, you so I, much. I write every day almost it's a pleasure to this, this communication with Vida and Anna and uh, the others they mm. go on all the time mm. some days it's more revolutionary insights and some <laughs> days it is less revolutionary Today so it was quite revolutionary. Uh, yeah. But that will come. So let's say uh, <laughs> goodbye to our um, you. audience if you if you if you are okay. And um, and see you see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>